homily of the fourth Sunday of Lent, year A. The first reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1, 6 to 7, 10 to 13. The responsorial psalm is from Psalm 23. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 8 to 14. And the gospel is according to St. John, chapter 9, verse 1 to 41. The theme of our homily is Jesus Christ, our light. In the past few years, there have been many attempts by scientists to bring sight to the blind by fitting them with artificial retinas. When the retinas are implanted, they turn incoming light into electrical signals and pass those signals to the nerves that run to the brain's optical cortex. This results in a low resolution and monochrome image that is better than no image at all. I'm not an optician, but I just want to drive at something. Why this is effective for those whose blindness is caused by a problem in their eyes? It is not workable for those born blind. For those who are born blind, an artificial retina is useless. Therefore, in such cases, miracles are required. Today, Jesus meets a man born blind and he restores his sight. One thing we notice in the episode is that before doing this, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Earlier in the Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus had said, I am the light of the world. He said this in the part of the temple where the offerings were put, where candles burned to symbolize the pillar of fire that led the people of Israel through the wilderness. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 and 22. In this context, Jesus called himself the light of the world. The pillar of fire represented God's presence, God's protection, and God's guidance. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, it means he is bringing us God's presence. He is bringing us God's protection, and he is giving us God's guidance. The Pharisees sought to excommunicate, the Pharisees sought to excommunicate those who helped in Jesus. The Pharisees sought to excommunicate those who believed in Jesus. We understand why the parents of the man born blind believed, but they kept quiet for fear of excommunication. The man, however, showed a consistent and a growing faith. Despite everything they did, he remained constant and insisted. He didn't give up. Jesus relieved him, therefore, of his suffering. At the end, who is blind? The Pharisees or the man born blind? It is obvious that the Pharisees were not only blind, they were ignorant and they were naive of the salvific power of Christ. They needed and they continue to need, like us today, to wake up from sleep. And rise from the dead so that Christ should shine on us. Again, I want to say it. We need to wake up from our sleep and rise from the dead so that Christ should shine upon us. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. This is shown in our belief we are going to show in Christ. As Christians, we must remember that Christ has brought us into his light. We have been enlightened through baptism. And we must be committed to witness our faith in Jesus. Paul reminds us clearly that now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light. For the effects of light are seen in complete goodness and right living and truth. 
the Jews believed that suffering came as a result of some great sin. Christ, however, used this man's suffering to teach about the faith in God. Regardless of the reasons of our suffering, Jesus has the power to deal with it. When suffering from a disease, from a tragedy, from a disability, it is not time to be in despair, saying, Why did this happen to me? What did I do wrong? Instead, we should ask God to give us strength for the trial. We must have this fully in mind. There is always a bright light at the end of the tunnel, and that bright light is Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.